large scale retailers, mail order shops. Wow, that was some serious work over there. Mm, nothing comes easy. And that is just the sorting. I'm yet to put a price tag onto each cloth before I can display them for the customers. Are you tired? Not too tired to listen to you. I don't think I've heard of mail order shops ever. When you hear the word mail, what comes to mind? The post office. But how can a post office be related to a shop? Nice question. Actually, these are large retail business units mm -hmm. which sell their goods through the post office or courier services. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The customers place their orders by mail and the delivery is done to the doorstep. No matter where they live, as in, I can live in Mombasa and buy something from Nairobi and it is mailed to me. Mm -hmm. Very interesting indeed. But wait, mm. how do the customers even know that such shops exist? Aha, another good question. They do a lot of advertising through print media, television, radios, and so on. They even post letters to potential customers. Wow. Any examples of such shops in Kenya? Mm, we have Jumia, Kilimall, OLX, Shopit, and Cheki, among others. I've heard of Jumia before. So, as always, we are going to analyze their characteristics. Definitely. Of course, I don't expect the customers to visit the shops. No, they don't. And you've already mentioned that goods are sold through the post office or courier company. Yes. What you didn't say mm. is whether the goods are paid for before or after the delivery. Well, for the post office, the goods are only dispatched after payment is done. For courier services, there are also arrangements of payment on delivery. I'd prefer payment on delivery so that I have to examine the goods first. Don't you worry. The goods are very genuine. So the other two characteristics are that they advertise their products through print and electronic media and they operate on cash with order as well as cash on delivery. Nice. At least the customer gets to choose what suits him or her. Yes. Now, mail order shops actually have lots of advantages. Mm -hmm. One of them being that the business does not have to have a real shop. Where do they operate from? From a store, usually located in the outskirts of an urban center. So this saves them the cost of renting an actual shop. And such shops can serve customers who are located very, very far away. That's right. All you have to do is place the order correctly and indicate your point of pickup. The fact that they do not have a real shop means that they employ fewer workers than the normal large-scale retail shops we've been discussing, right? Right. Which translates to reduced cost of operations. Now, another unique benefit of this kind of shop is that they only stock what has been ordered. How is that an advantage? I want to use my shop as a reference while answering your question. Mm -hmm. Look around you. What do you see? A lot of goods on display. When will they be sold? I have no idea. You know what this means for me? Mm -hmm. My capital is tied on this good, so until they are sold, I have to sit tight. Mm -hmm. For a mail order shop, on the other hand, they only stock goods that they already have orders for. And so, they know that the goods will definitely be sold. Wow, I like the way you explain things. I have clearly understood. Great. Such shops also tend to contract transport services, which is much cheaper than if they were to buy their own vehicles. I agree. I also like the fact that customers are saved the time they would have used going to the shops as they can make purchases from the comfort of their own homes. Mm -hmm. And further reduce costs associated with traveling such as parking charges or bus fares and so on. Finally, we wrap this up by looking at the disadvantages. I can think of some. Really? Go ahead. Well, customers cannot check their products in advance so as to ascertain their quality. So it is possible to end up with a low quality item. That's correct. Any other? If I lived in a remote area where accessibility is poor, it may be a bit costly for the goods to be delivered to me, right? Yes. You're doing well. I'm also thinking, mm. mail order shops rely so much on advertisement and so they have to invest hugely in it. Mm -hmm. They also have to incur a lot in terms of transportation. Isn't it possible that the prices of such goods might be a little higher than normal? 
Mm, that is a very valid question and yes, this is likely possible. To add to that, just like many of the large scale retailers, mm -hmm. there is no personal contact between the seller and the buyer. And so customer dissatisfaction cannot be easily detected. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you really had a lot of points in mind. Are you done? Yes. Good work. Such shops also depend so much on the efficiency of the distribution process. So any problem in any part of the chain will automatically affect the whole outcome. Makes sense. And finally, mail order shops are only limited to people who can read and write and maybe access the computer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how will they search the internet and place their orders? Very good question. Now you know all about retail trade. Yes. Retail trade is one of the two branches of home trade. Yes. It is further divided into small-scale retail trade and large-scale retail trade. We have small-scale retailers with shops and small-scale retailers without shops. Mm -hmm. The small-scale retailers without shops include itinerant traders, roadside sellers, and open market traders. Mm. The small-scale retailers with shops are kiosks, automatic vending machines, canteens, market stalls, single shops, tied shops, and mobile shops. Keep going. Thank you. We also have the large-scale retailers, which include multiple shops, also known as chain stores. We have departmental stores, supermarkets, hypermarkets, and mail order shops. Mm. And that is a great summary from a great student. Thank you. And you're welcome.